Hey guys, um, in this video I want to do basically a continuation of an older video that I made back in 2015 where I showed how to do customized designs using this software that I'm in right now which is called In Brilliance. And in this software Basically what you can do is you can add fonts and designs and then manipulate them to create your own custom designs however you want. And you do this all inside your hoop, which is what this is right here. And the benefit of doing this is not only being able to make your own creations, but also to know exactly how they're gonna look when you're stitching them out. So it's really, it makes things so easy. And then basically all you do is save the file and put it onto your machine and then press go. <laughs> so it's super, super easy. Um, and what I want to do now in this video is take that a step further and show you how it actually works. So if you want to know how to get to this point where you've got your design and it's just the way you want it, um, I'm going to link to the older video below this one so that you can go back and watch that and you can see just how easy it is to use the software and to make a design like this. And then for now, I'm going to show you how to take this design and then add it to your actual machine so that you can stitch it out. And then I'm even going to show you what it looks like when it's on the machine and when it is stitching out. Okay, so this is going to be really helpful for those of you who are um, either brand new to doing embroidery um, or especially if you're just considering doing embroidery because I know that it can seem really daunting to get into this and I know that when I was first considering doing it I was I was super intimidated by the idea of doing it because I didn't think it was going to be anything that I could actually do <laughs> but it's turned out to be so much easier than what I thought it was going to be and actually it's not just easy but it is super addicting. <laughs> so hopefully you won't hate me at the end of this when you see how easy it is and you're wanting to go out and buy a bunch of embroidery thread and a new machine and all that stuff. <laughs> so um, actually on that note, the machine that I have is a Brother SE400 and this is a beginner type of machine. It's actually a sewing machine slash embroidery machine and it only does very small embroidery. So it's a four by four hoop it's perfect for making the customized embroidery for snow globe ornaments. It's the perfect size for that, and it is not expensive. I'll also put a link to that below this video as well so you can see the exact machine that I'm using. But there are tons of other awesome machines out there as well, and if you just do a Google search, there's tons of websites that will um, teach you about different machines and what they do and all of that stuff if you're interested in learning more. All right? So um, this, this design I've already saved. It was something I actually already did once and I've saved it in the file type that my machine requires, which is the .pes. Now, all different types of machines use different file types that they require f to work on their machine. The brother uses the .pes. The nice thing about this software is that you can save your design in a whole bunch of different extensions depending on what you need for your machine, okay? Mine's the .pes. And now what I'm gonna do is I've already got my machine plugged into um, my computer via USB cord. All right, so it's already all hooked up and I know you can't see that part, but it's hooked up and I'm just gonna flip on my machine. I know you can't see me. I'm leaning back here and turning on my machine. And that's it starting up. And it should appear on my desktop here in a second. Right there it is. So it just popped up as no name. And I don't know why it says no name, but that is my machine. And now all I need to do is take my file that I want to add to my machine and just simply drag it on over here to the drive. Okay, so now what that means is it is on my machine and it's going to be ready for me to stitch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to my other camera and I'm going to show you what this looks like on the actual machine. Alrighty, so when you first turn on this particular machine, you will get this little message about the embroidery uh, arm moving. So you click that, click OK, and then you're going to get this menu. Okay, so this button here is the USB button and I'm just going to click it and now I think it might be a little bit hard to see in the video I hope it isn't too hard but you'll see that there is my little truck design so what I want to do is I want to select it and then I'm going to click this little 
button with the up arrow which is adding it to my machine like basically putting it in the queue to stitch now I have not hooped my fabric yet and I have not threaded my machine yet so what I'm gonna do is switch my camera angle to a different angle and show you how to hoop it really quick and then I will come back to actually stitching it up for you okay all right, so hooping is really, really easy. You'll need a stabilizer and then your fabric. And I don't use stabilizers for anything else other than doing this embroidery. So I just buy a pack of um, pre-cut stabilizer sheets on Amazon. And these are the tear away kind and they're not very thick. I am not a stabilizer expert. I don't really know much about it, but I have found that these work really well for me when I'm doing these embroidery um, pieces. And I'll, I'll put a link to this too below the video for in case you, um, you know, are not sure like me what kind of use. So, okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm putting my stabilizer first and then I'm laying my piece of fabric on top. This piece of fabric is a little bit wrinkly and normally I don't like to use wrinkly ones, but I just wanna show you how it's done. So you're gonna lay it on top of the bottom part of your a hoop okay and your hoop is probably going to have something like this where it's got an arrow and then the second part has the arrow that matches it so that you know how to line them up and you're going to lay it so that it is inside the hoop okay so the edges would be sticking out over the edge now you're going to lay your second piece right on top and push it down in so that it's holding the two pieces of fabric together and then what you want to do is kind of pull it so that it is taut all the way around. And then as you're doing this, after you get it a little bit tighter, you want to take the little screw that's on the side and tighten it. And then as you're going, just pull it a little bit tighter. You're just kind of striking a balance between getting it nice and taut and then tightening it as you go. If you just tighten it and all the way and then try to pull it uh, taut, what happens is the whole hoop will pop open and you have to start over again. This gets easier after you do it a couple of times. First couple of times can be a little bit frustrating. That's just my experience. I just couldn't seem to do it without it popping back out, but it gets easier. And you just wanna basically make it so that it is kind of like a drum, okay? Not too tight, but tight enough that your fabric isn't gonna bunch up when you've got it in the sewing machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my machine and then we'll do the next step. All right, so I've got my hoop of fabric on the machine, but I just wanted to show you really quickly how cool this is. So what it's done is it's showing me the five steps that it's gonna take to stitch out that design. And you can actually set these steps in that software in Brilliance. And you can put them in order of how you want them stitched. Um, which is the reason why that is useful is because sometimes you might have two different parts of the uh, design that use the same color thread. And so it would make sense to put those two steps together so that you don't have to do a thread change and then take out the thread and then go back and put the same thread in again. Now you're gonna see when we do this that I messed that up and I've got, I think it's red that I've got in two different places. So I have to re-thread twice for the red but it's still okay. <laughs> so um, it'll, it's basically telling me that there's five steps and I'm starting with red. So I have already put my red thread on and I'm gonna move my camera a little bit. And now I'm just going to lower the arm so that it's ready to go. And then now I'm just gonna push go and it's going to stitch out that first step. Okay, so step one is done. I'm going to raise up my foot. Is that cool or what? That is so awesome. You're gonna be wanting to embroider everything that you have in your house after you, after you start doing this, I promise. <laughs> All right, so now, as you can see, it's gone on to step two. Okay, so it's telling me I need to thread with white. So I will be right back after I thread this and show you the next step. All right, so I've got my white threaded on now, and before I start, I'm just going to trim this little tail from the red, and then lower down my arm again, and then I'm going to push go. All 
that one was a quick one because it was just the window so I'm going to change to my next thread which is telling me black is my next color and I'm also going to trim that little white tail so I've got a camera in my way so I'm feeling a little awkward but there we go and now I'm just gonna lower down my needle and hit go again all right so now I'm going to thread my khaki color alrighty so the khaki color is threaded I just lowered my presser foot and hitting go okay so all good to go with the last thread change I've lowered my presser foot and I'm gonna hit go alrighty so is that cool or what there we go let me oops let me focus in on that so you can see it and now what we need to do is just clean up some of those loose threads and take it off the hoop all right so now what I want to do is just clean up some of these loose threads that are hanging off. I like to do some of them while it's still on the hoop because it seems a little easier for me to do that way. And this is not a perfect job, but I don't want to take forever doing this on the video. So I'll probably fix it up a little more after, after I'm done with the video, but then I'm just going to remove it from the hoop. Pop it out of there and then with those sheets that I was telling you about before all you have to do to remove it is just tear it away let me make sure I'm in focus you can just you start a tear to get it to the middle and then just pull it right away and it's super super simple and I will link to those sheets on Amazon too right below the video okay and there you go now you can trim around it so that you can use it on the middle of a snow globe ornament i hope you enjoyed seeing how easy that is and i hope it will inspire you to start doing some embroidery for yourself if you haven't already thanks for watching